Welcome back to another video, guys. What did you guys think about last night's game versus Canada? Um, give me your thoughts in the comment section before we get into this uh, into this video. Let me know what you think, what you think Perhalter should do, what this team should do going forward, because um, we do have a very tough game against Honduras. And uh, trust me, that game is going to be even tougher than this game against Canada. And it's going to be tougher than El Salvador because going into Honduras, into San Pedro Sula is, is another story, man. It's, it's way tougher, in my opinion. And we don't really have a good history against Honduras there. So, man, just throw some prayers up there that, uh, that we finally get this fixed, this offense going. Because to be honest, um, we're lacking, man. We're lacking. And and if you think that we're not, if you think that, oh, you know, this team is just a bunch of young kids that are finding ways to put this thing together, you must be blind. Um, this team was more than capable of garnering those six points uh, in these past games. They were more than capable. They have all the stars. They have all the the, the tools available. It, it's not clicking for them. It's not, it's not working for them. There's no creativity, no offense. Um, and in my opinion, this team is an offensive juggernaut, just ready, ready, waiting to explode with goals. And I don't know, they're just not finding it. Uh, defensively, they're solid. Defensively, they're, they're, they, they've been great. But offensively, they're just not clicking. It's time to, in my opinion, look at the head coach. It's time to, to look at him and, and think and wonder whether if he is the correct man for this job. Is he the type of man that's going to get everything out of this offense? Everything out of these players offensively. Defensively, like I said, um, I don't have a doubt. This guy was a defensive player for the USMNT in the past, was great at it. And obviously it looks like he's doing a fantastic job with our defense. We've only conceded, I believe, two goals in nine games. So goes to show that that defense is clicking. But the offense, like I said, is it's just falling behind. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on this game. Um, are you that type of fan that's freaking out? Are you pressing that panic button? Are you wondering whether other people are doing the same? Uh, you're going to find out today on the comment section. Or are you the type of fan that uh, says, you know what? It's okay. It's two games in, two points. We're okay. We're in fourth place. Let me know in the comment section what type of fan you are. And also while you're at it, guys, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us on our socials, all that stuff. Uh, we truly appreciate it. In today's video, it's going to be a little bit different today. I'm not going to give you player by player performance grades or anything like that. I'm actually just going to break down the offense and then the defense, tell you the positives and the negatives of each. And I'm also going to tell you the positives and negatives, which in my opinion, were more negatives of Burhalter as well. So yeah, that's what today's video is going to be about. And uh, just a little rant, you know. So the offense, it was a little bit of the same versus El Salvador. Nothing really changed. It was a stagnant, not creative, boring, anemic offense. Granted, we didn't have players like McKinney, Gio Reyna, Weya, but still, we had Christian Pulisic and it was the same. Nothing really changed. And in my opinion, I think that falls on the coach. Final third continues to be disconnected from the rest of the team. Um, I see some plays brewing from the defense, kind of connects to the mid, but then from there, there's just, it doesn't get to that final third where they can take that ball to the final third get into that uh, into that penalty box and create a chance it just it's not happening and there's a saying if there's no opportunities there's no creativity there's no offense and there's no chances for goal therefore you're not going to get any goals and you're probably not going to win the game and in my opinion that's what's happening with this team we have a lot of parts a, a lot of pieces in play but it's just not clicking for them and i'm not exactly sure what what the deal is not sure if it's the players not sure if they're not comfortable with the system uh not sure if it's the coach not sure exactly what the case is something that i noticed last night from this team was uh was something that i truly hate to see from any soccer team and that's playing uh abalonazo in other words just throwing a bunch of balls kicking a bunch of balls up in the air and praying to god throwing a bunch of hail marys out there praying that you're teammate up in the offense lands with it you know it falls to him in his feet and he finds a way to score a goal that's what i was noticing and uh, that's what i saw a lot from this team i would see brooks get the ball miles robinson get the ball and then just try to rip it up into the air praying to god somebody in the offense came down with it and, and there was a chance to be created there and that just goes to show that this team isn't clicking uh, if your defense is doing that that means they're finding other means necessary to create often if your midfield isn't creating if your midfield isn't holding on to the ball they're going to find a way and that's exactly what i noticed this team was just there's just no identity to this team and and there was a lot of plays being forced a lot of chances opportunities being forced in there because obviously like i said there was nothing being created and these past two games that i've seen the usmnt play i've seen that they've lacked the ability to string possession to string any possessions together, to string any anything together. There was definitely some opportunities last night to go ahead. For example, that Pulisic one that he had that one alone 
and it hit the post. Uh, obviously, it didn't go in, but that was an opportunity. So th- there was a chance there. You know, we could have we could have won the game two one, but it didn't happen. And in my opinion, I I just don't think that Berhalter. I, I just don't think that this kind could set us apart from from another team s- schematically. You know, like give us the advantage schematically. I haven't seen it versus El Salvador. Um, he didn't put any system in position to to give us the advantage schematically or systematically or tactically for that case. Against Canada, the same thing. It was all, hey, go out there and uh, pray to God this offense clicks and we score some goals and, and we win. And that doesn't end well, obviously. If you're not going to win your your road games, win your home games. That's that's how you get into the World Cup. And that's not happening right now. Overall, very disappointed in the offense. Very disappointed in the fact that we can't get anything going. It's just sputtering and sputtering, laying dormant. Knowing that we can create, knowing that we have the ability of of scoring goals, scoring a lot of them, and we just can't. Very frustrating, to say the least. Very, very frustrating. But um, we just pray that it gets better, that it gets fixed, that something happens. But at this point, I mean, it's two games into the World Cup qualifiers. We're looking at Honduras in a couple of days. We're going to San Pedro Sula. That shit's going to be tough. Uh, and in my opinion, by the way we've been playing, I'm praying to God we even get a damn tie. With this offense, I'm praying to God we even get a tie over there. And if we do, that's a win. And if we could get a win, hey, the more the merrier, right? The more points, the merrier. But if we could get a tie, man, at this point, I'm just looking at a tie. I'm hoping to God we can get a tie. We can walk away with a, with a one point, you know, kind of just regroup for the next uh, World Cup qualifier cycle. But for now, it's looking very tough. And in my opinion, I think Berhalter definitely needs to deliver um, come Wednesday against Honduras. Um, I said that last game against El Salvador that he had needed to have this offense clicking for, for Canada. Obviously, that wasn't the case. And uh, I highly doubt that he'll have the, the offense clicking for, for Honduras as well. Defense. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say is don't ever leave John Brooks on an island. You saw what happened against Tejon Buchanan. Tejon could have easily scored if he was a little bit more greedy with that shot. He sent a nice uh, center, but if you want to take the shot, he could have. He had the angle. He literally just flew by John Brooks. And that's what worries me, man. John Brooks is good. He's okay. He's technical. But the guy just lacks in speed. Is not the fastest. And then obviously Tejan showed us that. Put that on display last night. And another thing I want to talk about, Brooks, what the hell were you doing in that goal? I'm not going to put it up, obviously, because of copyright situations. But uh, if I could, I would put up the highlight. But when Canada scored, Alfonso Davies came in and sent in that nice center. John Brooks was just looking at the forward scoring. Just looked at Laren. Stared at him, behind him. If you guys want to go look at the replay, you can definitely see where John Brooks kind of just gave up on the play. Didn't didn't fight for it. Didn't fight for the ball. Didn't run to where Laren was. Didn't follow him. Nothing. He just allowed him to go and, and clean it up. And that's that worries me a little bit. That worries me a little bit because I'm seeing players like Brooks doing this. I'm seeing players like Des doing his thing. McKinney doing his thing. Gio Reyna trying to do his thing because obviously he's not getting the ball on the winger side. I'm seeing a lot of players do their own thing and, and that kind of worries me. I wonder if these players maybe aren't buying into what Berhalter's selling. That has me questioning. Are these players playing for, for, for Berhalter? Are they playing for Triple G? It seems like they're just, they're doing their own thing. And that happens because players just don't feed into the system. Players don't, I, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole here, but what if that's the case? What if these players are like, you know what? What is this guy trying to, what is this guy trying to accomplish with this system? The system isn't working. His system isn't working for us. I'm getting a little too carried away, but who knows? That could be a possibility where these players aren't feeding, aren't buying into his system. And maybe they're just not playing for the guy. Maybe he's losing the locker room. In other words, who knows? And that defense, you know, it was great all night. It was obviously a stingy, stingy defense. In my opinion, we have one of the stingiest defense in CONCACAF and I love it. I love a stingy defense because defense, well, at least in football, they win, when they win championships here is a little different. Now, the only problem was that Berhalter did not have an answer for Alfonso Davies on the left side. He was running all over the place. That guy was the safety valve for Canada. That guy was the offense for Canada, him and Laren. Um, overall, the guy was just running ramp. And I thought DeAndre Edlin was fast, but Alfonso Davies is way faster. And you saw in that play when he just fucking ran past uh, Yedlin and sent it that nice center and was cleaned up for the for the tie. But there was no answer for this kid. And in my opinion, that's that's something that Berhalter lacks as well. That in-game decision of finding a way to adapt. Our defense has been clicking as of late. Uh, they've only allowed two goals in nine games, nine matches. And that gives me a little bit of hope that if our offense got going a little bit, if we were able to, you know, manage to score at least two to three goals a game, 
or even two goals. And I feel that our defense is good enough to clamp down, be a stingy defense, and just shut the game, shut the game down basically for the for the opponent's offense. I think we have that type of defense. We have that type of stingy defense, but we got to get that offense going. And once we get that offense going, then that defense can definitely clamp down and shut those games out for us. Let's talk about Burhalter here real quick. Uh, let's start off talking about the, the sub situation where he made the subs around the 80th, 82nd minute there. Now, at that point, there's no point in bringing anybody in aside from, hey, we're winning, we're on top, let's just kill a little bit minutes off the clock. If you're expecting a player like Sargent to come in and do something in 10 minutes, get into rhythm in 10 minutes, that's not going to happen. You need to give these players a little bit more. And in my opinion, we're at the cross lines of this game could go either way. It could go for the US or it could go for Canada. We scored the goal immediately right there. And then that's when Berhalter should have made some defensive, you know, some defensive substitutes to help out that defense, help out a John Brooks because he was tired as hell. Obviously, you saw that in the goal. Throw some players in the defense to saturate the, the, those lanes, man. And nothing happened. We scored and then immediately we conceded because our players were tired and Berhalter just didn't think straight enough to make a sub, to adjust, say, hey, you know what? We're up. Okay, hey, let's 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 throw the team a little bit back a little bit. Let's incorporate someone more defensive. Let's throw in another center back in there or something. Let's switch formations where we can incorporate three center backs. We'll throw James Sands in there and we'll close this game out because our defense is that stingy. Our defense is that good to close out games for us. But instead, we score and we don't do nothing. Berhalter sits on his hands, allows this Canada team to do whatever they wanted with Alfonso Davies on the left side and we conceded a goal. And that, in my opinion, that's something that Burhalter needs to change. He needs to clean that up. He needs to find a way to make in-game decisions, in-game adjustments. And he's not doing that. That's something I mentioned earlier in the video, but he's just not doing that. The lack of creativity and offense, man, that falls under Burhalter himself. Triple G. That falls under the, the system, the schematic, tactical system that he's trying to incorporate into this team. If your team ain't buying into it, it ain't gonna work. So whatever you're doing ain't working for the offense. That's why they... There's no creativity, no offense, no goals. And I understand there was players like Gio Reyna missing Weston McKinney for certain situations. But still, you got players like Aronson. You got players like Pulisic. You got players like Conrad to your disposal. In my opinion, this guy Berhalter has all the pieces in, in position to, to build a solid race car and he's just not doing it. The guy just doesn't have the mental to do it. Didn't see the urgency. Uh, Berhalter had no urgency in his eyes in his body language at all throughout the game, kind of just standing there with his arms crossed there, like looking around, wondering when the goal was going to come through, whether it was going to come or not. He was, yeah, no urgency. I mean, there was booze after the game. Goes to show that these fans ain't getting what they want, man. We as fans ain't getting what we want. And uh, who the hell gets booed after their first World Cup qualifier game at home? Their first World Cup qualifier game at home and they get a boo. Well, it can't get worse than that. It, it, it can't get worse than that, man. And geez, it's, it's disappointing to say the least. Very disappointing. I could go on and on about Berhalter and the fact that he's just not, he's not the right guy for this job, in my opinion. I, I, I just don't think he is. And I'm going to go out there and say it, man. We got that Lamborghini just parked in the driveway, ready to go, but we just don't have that correct driver. We don't have the right man behind the wheel. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to be honest. Look, guys, I'm not complaining. Okay. I'm not, I'm not bashing on this team. I'm just basically talking about things that could be done, things that need to be done to be competitive. To, to, to win games. It doesn't take a damn scientist to figure these things out. You could sit there with the notebook and, and break it down and you'll see that even you yourself can fix these things to make this team better. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm not bashing. I'm not complaining. I'm bashing on Burhalter because obviously he's not doing his damn job. But aside from that, I'm not complaining, man. I'm a big time fan of this team. That's why I created this channel because I wanted to be a part of the process. Right now, obviously we're in the process. It is a process and we got to take it with green of salt. We got to chip away every single day like it's a damn statue, basically. Trust the process. And right now, my trust isn't fully there, obviously, but I've gone through, obviously, World Cups with the U.S. I've gone through disqualifications from the World Cup. Obviously, a lot of you have. I just want this team to to play at its highest potential. And I think with the players we have, we definitely have a high ceiling. And we're just not playing at that potential. That That's that's the problem. Obviously, there's a lot of things that come into factor why things don't go as planned. But majority of the time, it's obviously the scheme, the coach, the system that's in place, you know, if these players are succeeding in Europe, why can't they do it here? You know, why not put a system that's going to be player friendly for your players? You know, allow them to do what they do at their clubs. Let them be free. Incorporate a system that's going to help them. You know, in my opinion right now, Burhalter has, he's in a perfect position. He can have this team for the next 10 years. Incorporate a system that's going to be at their full strength, is going to help them, is going to promote their growth, you know, benefit them in the long run and now to win games, help us win games and just Keep that system. Leave that system. You need to find that system that's best for this, these players. And right now, I don't think we have that in, in position. But no, I'm not complaining, man. I'm not complaining. I'm a, I'm a big fan. 
I just want this team to to not be complacent. This tie here, these ties here, they, they want to make you believe that they're they're fine. No, they're not fine. That tie against El Salvador, that maybe that's okay. But against Canada, we needed to win yesterday. And I'm going to stick by my guns. We needed to win yesterday. And if we would have won in this channel, it would have been daisies and roses all day. But since we didn't, we got to obviously point out the negatives, right? And and that's what it is. That's the part of sport that that's what it is. We're not going to get a damn trophy for getting a tie. That's not going to work here. We've been disqualified. We've had that taste in our mouth and we don't want it. At least I don't. And that's why I'm out here, you know, making sure I'm holding people accountable on this channel. Do my research, break my facts down and uh, talk about it to you guys. So I give you guys a little bit of knowledge of what's happening. But in this channel, I'm letting you guys know, man, in this channel, if if the US does good, we're going to have a good day. If they do bad, we're going to rant. I just want to let you know, I, I want to be transparent on what type of what type of channel this is. This isn't the channel that's going to say, "Oh, it's every everything's going to be okay, guys, don't worry." No. I'm going to say how it is because that's reality. Those are facts. And right now, this is very disappointing. I haven't given up hope yet. Hopefully, he can go out there and turn out a result against Honduras, get 3 points, and if he doesn't, then it's time to definitely look ourselves in the mirror and decide whether it's time to remove this guy from from the throne or or give them, give them, continue to give them chances. But I think that this game against Honduras is going to say everything. And in my opinion, that's where we're going to find out whether this is meant to be or not. But overall, I'm not going to panic yet. We're not pressing the panic button yet. Not just yet. We got to see what happens. And then, then after that, we can definitely act upon accordingly. Aside from that, yeah, guys, this is basically my thoughts about this game, about this team so far in the first two games. Hoping that uh, things get turned around. We turn around this ship. We turn this ship around. And these are my thoughts on Burhalter. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts on the defense, offense, Burhalter. What, what do you think? Should Burhalter continue as head coach for the USMNT? Is he wasting our talent? Uh, should we give him chances? Should we continue to give him that chance since he did win some trophies, some hardware for us in the summer? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section. And also hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the comments section down below as well. Follow us on our socials, share our content. Aside from now, see you guys next time. See ya.